Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to VBO's coverage of Oxford United. It is the weekly preview show. We are going to be previewing Northampton Town versus Oxford United, which kicks off at 3 o'clock Saturday, the 16th of January. Before that, one quick note before Ian gets into the news pre-match. We are going to be live streaming from 2.50 on Saturday, the 16th of January. Please come join us, have a chat, have a comment, say some rude stuff, maybe super chat with us, but just generally come down and enjoy it. It's a lot better with all of us enjoying it together. Indeed. Ian, what is the news for us? My now? news is, how can you call it a weekly preview show when we didn't do one last week? I have no answer to that question. Okay. Um, right. So, obviously, a good week. Uh, well, we didn't have a game in the FA Cup, so, you know, that's nothing to talk about there. We have just played today in the Papa John's Trophy, uh, which is obviously always a good opportunity for the fringe players to get a game, even though it's a tournament no one really cares about. But are we getting to that point where we might start to care about it a little bit? News before, transfer news. Sean Clare, public enemy number one, the guy who was ranked worse than the coronavirus in Oxford, has been shipped off to Burton Albion on loan. Um, a very, very odd signing. Everything's been odd about him. He, is he a right back? Is he not a right back? There's been comments saying that Hasselbank wants to play him, or Claire said Hasselbank wants to play him more as a midfielder. So the whole thing is just weird. It obviously is like Robinson thinks he can get a better player in than him on loan. Talk of Gavin White, talk of Nathan Holland, players that have obviously been at Oxford United before. So we will see on that one. But Oxford won 1-0 one, one, one against Cambridge United in the Battle of the Boat Race um, in the Papa John's Trophy. It was a pretty decent game. It was all right. There was periods where both sides looked okay. I would say out of the fringe players that played, I thought Mark Sykes was excellent. I thought he was... A, yes. Matt Sykes doesn't play for, Man, for Oxford United We keep United calling anymore. him Matt when he's Mark. but um, Sorry, Mark Sykes doesn't play for Oxford United anymore. Well, I didn't think so either. Um, but the search is over. We found <laughs> it. Not frozen out, apparently, according to Robbo. And I thought he was really good. I mean, everything that we like about Mark Sykes or I like about him, he's a busy player. He likes to make things happen. He was doing a lot of that stuff in this game today, and I thought he was really good. The other player that was really good is obviously Rob Hall. He got man of the match. He won the game with an excellent free kick. And he just reminds everybody of what a great footballer he is, even though it does look like it, if Robinson could get him out the door, he'd be quite happy to get him out the door to get someone else in but he played well great to see Brannigan back great to see Winnell get game time as well although neither of them were that spectacular in the game and just generally another win another clean sheet good stuff for Oxford as we move on to playing what I like to call cannon fodder that's in right Ian in town Northampton Town, or the Cobblers as they're called, are currently sat in 19th place on 22 points. We actually predicted them for 20th place. I did go back and look, so they are bang on what we thought. Uh, not great form running into it, but they do have a win and a draw, but that was preceded by three or four straight losses. Uh, only six wins on the year and 11 losses, including a 4-0 drubbing by Oxford United last time these two sides came up against each other. Their manager is Keith, Keith Curl. He played for Man City, Wolves, Sheffield United, has three England caps. And it's been manager since 2018. That's right. That's how much filler I have to do for this team. That I, I love give... the way you like. I suppose if there's younger viewers, they might not know who Keith Curley is. I I know, I knew all the, that stuff. So, oh, I'm. Do you want to do this for me or like you know, Premier League chocolate bars, Keith Curley Whirly. Um, they normally play a 4-3-3, but in their most recent two games, which they've had good results and they played a 3-5-2, so I think we can actually expect them to line up like that against Oxford in this match. They think it's working for them. Uh, Sam Hoskins is their star player. He plays quite literally every game. He's got four goals and four assists. Harry Smith also has four goals, but only one assist. And then Danny Rose rounds out their top scorers with three goals. Uh, a couple of random facts, because there's not really any news that I could find on them. Uh, Holger's their mainstay at centre back. Uh, Mitchell's their established goalkeeper, but they are shipping goals for fun. They have the third worst defensive record. They've shipped 36 goals. Only Swindon and Burton have done worst. Uh, they're the lowest scoring team in the league with only 19 goals. And you can see that when their two top scorers have four each. Uh, Jimmy Floyd. Uh, here's an interesting fact. Jimmy Floyd was their manager from 2017 to 2018. He's been around the lower leagues. Uh, on Wikipedia, Oxford United are listed as a minor rival. And ex-managers of this club include Justin Edinburgh, 
A.D. Boothroyd, Chris Wilder, and of course, Jimmy Floyd. While Tom tries to desperately fill time trying to talk about old Northampton town managers, I don't know why he's doing that. You're probably wondering why we're not talking about the new signings that they made this week. Well, the reason is, is because we filmed this late on Tuesday and these signings did not come in until Thursday. So that's why we didn't put them in the video, but I'm putting them in there now. And here they are. Northampton have brought in Mikel Miller on loan from Rotherham and Ryan Edmondson on loan from Leeds. They're both attacking players and I imagine they both, if not start, will feature in the game on Saturday to try and get Northampton some goals, because that is where they have been really struggling this season. But I'm sure the likes of Atkinson, Moore, Ruffles and Long will deal with them quite comfortably. I imagine the rivalry comes from the fact that Wilder left Oxford to go to Northampton. And oh. um, it was... Uh... My Microsoft Word has um, autocorrected Chris Wilder to Christ Wilder. <laughs> I think that's quite apt. I think he would yep. he would see himself on those lofty that lofty pedestal. I'm sure. Um, yeah, the last time we played Northampton, obviously they were pretty poor at the back. And once Oxford actually decided that they wanted to actually go at them and attack, they kind of folded to use the Simpsons phrase quicker than Superman on Laundry Day. Um, hey, 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 hey. Um, and hopefully that sort of the same thing will happen in this game as well. Although. Um, I do think last time we played them, they did have a lot of injuries or they did have a lot of like players out suspended. Uh, mm. It was a very weakened Northampton side because I know they had to like play Ricky Holmes for like two games in a row, which is never a good idea because he can barely play one game in a row. Um, he played for you guys last year, didn't he? Yeah, well, two seasons ago, but he was he's a good player. He's just perennially, perennially injured. I can't say the word. Always injured. There we go. That's easier. And... Um, but he is useful, definitely. He's definitely a useful player at this level. And yeah. Northampton, though, they were like they came up through the playoffs, and we always thought they'd be the side that struggled out of the four sides that came up from League One. So it's no surprise to see them have little like runs of bad form. It's not much to say about Oxford. I think Oxford will probably play pretty much the same side that beat Burton Albion five one. There's not really any reason to make any changes. Everyone was pretty much excellent in that side. The only thing would be maybe would um Cameron Brannigan come in and start but I don't think there's any rush to really need to get Brannigan into a starting lineup when the likes of Ford and the likes of Kelly have played quite well in recent games alongside McGuain and Goran um I think the... we've also we've talked about the fact that the, the big matches are coming in March aren't they that's when the schedule for Oxy gets really tough and he needs to be at full fitness then not right now yeah uh, and there's, there's, we know, we know pretty much what side Oxford are going to play. Uh, they've been pretty settled in the last few games at the back. That it's going to be uh, Stevens in goal. It's going to be Long. It's going to be uh, Atkinson. It's going to be Moore, Skipper in the side. It's going to be Ruffles. It's going to be Goran. It's going to be McGuain. Probably going to be Kelly. And it's going to be Shadipo and Henry with Matty Taylor up front, which is probably Oxford's strongest lineup at the moment. Give or take Brannigan coming in when he's fit. Um, or anyone else is maybe better than Shadipo coming in on loan. And um, I would say that's a strong enough Oxford side to win this game. I, I, I would be surprised if they didn't. And I'll be surprised if I'll be surprised if Oxford do concede. They concede more than one. Um, I think it will be I, I think it will be a win to nil. And I predicted a 2-0 win for Oxford. Yeah, I think if you want to check out our predictions specifically for this game, go to our League One predictions. They're in the top corner. I'll try and put them now, but they're up there anyway if you click on the cards. Oxford looking really good. They're now mid-table. Um, this is a really good chance for them to kick on and start getting points in the bank now. You've got to agree as well, though. Like It's like they don't... Northampton just don't really seem like they have the weapons to really cause Oxford a lot of problems. Unless Oxford have a sloppy game and they're like really sluggish and make oh, mistakes. It, I they think Oxford are on nine-game unbeaten run the league, ten if you include the cup. I think... For Northampton to win this game, it will be a shock. And I think both you and I will be, I know you'll be angry as an Oxford fan, but I think we'll really just be looking at this being like, well, that's a chance missed. Because Absolutely. if Oxford want to do what they they set out to do at the beginning of the year, which is at least be in the playoffs, then now that they finally got themselves back on firm footing and we're not talking about relegation, they, they need to batter this Northampton team. And get, well, they need their I mean, goal yeah. difference to improve and they need points in the bank. I, I mean, batter and batter is a bonus they just need to win the game yeah if they have a solid game and they go and win you know one nil 
no one's going to be complaining come the end of the match, are they? Except for you. You will be. I complain about everything, though. Doesn't even, not even Happy Man United at top, this guy. Uh, I don't think that's true. And if uh, you want to see that, check again in the cards, because our Premier League predictions are up, and um, I sing. I sing in them. No, you don't. You do, all you do is th- put out a big asterisk thing. But they shouldn't really be top. <laughs> it doesn't count. You know, enough of this. This is an <laughs> Oxford United video. Ian, anything left to say about this game before I sign us out? No, I have nothing to say. I'm just going to say, before you say it, I'm just going to say, Oxford fans, Northampton fans, please give us your comments down below. We'd love to hear what your predictions are. And if you're watching this retrospectively, please give us a load of abuse for how um, bad we've done or how, or if we've done well, give us a little bit of praise, God forbid. Yeah, Northampton fans, definitely let me know if I got anything wrong. Let me know if the 352 is accurate or not. And let me know if Sam Hoskins, I think it was his name, isn't your best player, if there's someone else. Please like, please subscribe, please have a look at all the links in our description. And uh, please join us to follow along. 250, Saturday, be there. The big question is, what happened to Alex Fisher?